everybody. Good morning. Happy uh, Saturday. Hopefully you guys can hear us. Anyone in the cartoon crew in the chat room, uh, if you can verify that I'm coming through nice and clear, I'm going to pull Jerome up. Uh, it seems that uh, we're having technical difficulties, but you should be used to that by now. Um, let me, why aren't you? Oh, because I'm solo. There you go. Jerome, can you hear me? I can indeed. Good morning. All right. Hoping uh, Rose will log back in. <laughs> you know, so we can go ahead and see her. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And uh, after a uh, pretty uh, long and eventful, and I say eventful, uh, three weeks off, um, we are here to once again entertain you for Saturday morning cartoons. So thank you. I see Cheryl's popped up. Odie, good morning. Uh, hold on. Hold that thought. Hold that thought, Jerome. Um, we, we have been off for three weeks. Uh, and in that time, there's a lot that has happened. And before we get into our show, and hopefully we can get Rose back up and running real quick, we'll go ahead and tell you exactly basically everything in, that happened, especially with me. I think right now, everybody is sequestered. Everybody is, uh, shall I say, isolated, but nobody's infected. Um, so, hey, good morning, David. Good to see you, brother. Uh, so it, it's it's been crazy. If you guys have been keeping track of my Facebook page, you've gotten, you know, minute by minute, second by second, minute second by minute second uh, reports of uh, what the hell has been going on with my condition and this condition at hand in, in, in terms of the nation. Um, but this is now probably the best time imaginable to be broadcasting only because there's no other way people can go out and show their talent in person but from the uh, the comfort of their couch or their kitchen or their, you know, workout room or their easy their chair. Home. What's that, Joe? Their easy chair. I got a nice big wingback chair I'm sitting in. Well, I'm sitting on this damn couch and I can swear there is a butt imprint that I feel every time I come into contact with the surface of this, this, this vessel, this vessel here. I, 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 I you know, you know what a divot is, right? Yep. Yeah, I slide my butt across the couch and it just sinks at, at, at some spot. And I'm like, okay, that's my butt. Didn't didn't Sheldon have a thing about that? You know, he knew when somebody sat in his, his you know, his, his couch. I have no idea personally, but um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure they, you know, it, it, there was a segment of that. Um, so it, it, we are back, like I said. And uh, I think you guys need us more than ever because... I've been sequestered since uh, Thursday. Ha! Yeah, I know. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay, so before I came for my testing, and that's another story uh, for later. Um, uh, before I came, before I ended up home for my testing, I literally stopped off at the supermarket because I knew, oh my god, I, I, I'm going to be in the house for a while. Um, but I think everything that I purchased on Thursday is about 90% eh, gone. Two Go things. Ahead. Yeah. First off, this, this pandemic started shortly after we went into hiatus. I'm not saying there's a connection, but you know, <laughs> it's our fault. It's our fault. Okay. Exactly. We are the power. Second of all, those who don't know, Mark has been complaining that he's been losing weight and he needs to gain a few pounds. And and, and just so you know, Mark, since he's been in sequestration, has actually gained some weight. So I think the pandemic is actually good for Mark. I don't know if I've actually gained weight. You said, I haven't. you said you gained two pounds. I think the combination of eating too much damn food and then going to the bathroom and rinse and repeat – Defeats the purpose of me wanting to gain weight, okay? <laughs> I need to be out building muscle, you know, and, and what? I just ordered <laughs> foam for my current Yeah, chair. you know, because you know, foam, <laughs> foam in the cushions, you know, because, you yeah, know. You well, can I, I haven't seen Cheryl's butt, so I don't know what she needs foam for. Doesn't she have oh, I'm not touching foam? that remark. Isn't that natural? I mean, I don't get it. Don't we kind of all touch our butt bones? Because I tell you, right now, I know what my butt bones feel like. Okay, that ain't right. We I'm, kind of, that I'm right. kind of fluffy down there, so, you know, it's not a big problem. Well, if I turned sideways, you probably wouldn't see anything. Uh, I, I'm just saying. There would be no shape there. Um, I got a lot of shapely friends, but um, 
So, Mark, oh you also complained about needing to get a haircut. Oh, let me tell you something. Either I'm going to end up like Huggy Bear from Starsky and Hutch or yeah, Epstein from, from Welcome Back Crowd. Now, it's been decades, literally decades, since I had probably hair, uh, you know, that big. But I swear to you, if I don't get out of this house, yes, it's been three days. Shut up. If I don't get out of this house, I am going to kill every piece of furniture that I have around here. I'm literally going to choke out my chair because, you know, I don't 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 look at me. Don't you stare at me. And I'm going to choke uh, anyway. So we're back. Just it's be aware the toaster is the leader of the conspiracy. The toaster? How'd you go? Oh, okay. I got it. <laughs> well, I'm thinking Battlestar Galactica right now when you said toaster. Well, I wasn't just thinking the toaster because it, it's also in cahoots with the coffee maker. So, you know. Yeah, you know, that's what it is. We're gonna we're getting taken over by all of this stuff. And I swear to you, I am really now sick and tired of quarantine karaoke. Okay. I don't want to watch you sing. I don't <clears throat> karaoke bar specifically because I didn't want to do that there either. But you notice I'm not singing. Well, thank God. And if you you're do, welcome. Got, you're welcome. I got this little X right by your box here. And, and you know, um, what, what, what? <laughs> Garrett. No, no, oh no Garrett, Garrett. Garrett. Grizzly Adams. I want Garrett. you to think mountain man. Garrett, you better keep shaving, buddy, because I'm personally going to break quarantine and come over to your house with a knife. You know, um, I, I don't want to see we are not back in the freaking old West. We are not recolonizing America, guys. So you don't need to be following the Oregon Trail thinking you don't need to wash or shave. And you know what? I'm sorry. I see beards and all I think are dirty people. I, don't, I do. I don't. You showered this morning. But it seems like I said, when you have a beard, it's because you were too lazy to no, 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 no. shave. You're too lazy to shave. You're too lazy to wash your ass. You my, know? my wife, my daughter wants me to keep the beard. Well, what do children know? We are training them. They have no idea what they're saying. Okay, Between, they just, between the beard and my gut, she looks at me and she goes, Daddy, you look like Santa Claus. Well, um... Okay. Well, I haven't seen you. And, and there's where the hell you been, girl? Uh oh. Rose? Is she oh stuck? My God. Hello. Hello. I got booted. Rose, you are. Freezing. I got booted. Hello. You, you, Rose, you're intermittent. You're freezing. You're doing that. And of course, it's not your fault since now the entire freaking world is on the internet because they're not at work. They're not at the grocery stores. Everybody's logged in. Bandwidth is being sucked up like you wouldn't believe. And if you have a lesser quality internet, it's going to suffer the most. Uh, Rose, wave wave your hand or something so I know you're not standing still on purpose. No. Nice face. All right. I'm going to kick Rose so she can at you least. See that? Yeah. Rose, you were really going back and forth uh, to, to a total dead stop. You can hear me. I know you're texting me too. Um, okay, guys, bear with me. Wow, crappy connection. I'm sending her a text right now so she can read that if she can't hear or see us. Um, but anyway, so <coughs> going through, oh, what is Sage saying? My father had a Grizzly Adams beard my whole childhood. Probably why I like facial hair on men. Well, Sage. No, 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 no. Now, this is the damage that is done to children. You instill that in their mind at an early age, and they're going to think they're supposed to like it when they get, you know, beautiful and, and old like Sage. Well, Sage is not old, but beautiful at least. Um, oh, yes. Uh, Jerome is now Kara. So you guys call Jerome Kara from now on. All right. Now, so, 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 so let me tell people what's going on, why it looks like I'm, I'm Kara, is um, – Every every computer I have in this house will not link up to the to the cameras for some reason, and so I've had to use my wife's tablet. Okay. Uh, uh, what was I was about to say. Um, Beard. Um, oh no, no, yeah. But David said he finally broke down and shaved and gave himself my look. I am not trusting myself with a pair of clippers. Did, no did they, did they put a bowl on his head? I don't know, but let me tell you, my brother. He's my got brother 
Yeah, my brother is fantastic at giving himself haircuts. Of course, he's totally bald now, but when he was doing it, he was really good at doing that. I'm not, I swear to God, I'm going to be like this, and then all of a sudden, something's going to get my attention. I'm going to, eh. Okay, so. So, fashion statement. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's a fashion statement. What the hell is your show on uh, today, Jerome? Oh, education. Education okay. in cartoons. And, and how did you come up with this? Uh, well, I was looking at some stuff, and I realized that um, some of the shows that I loved, especially that we're going to show, were ones that where they were blatantly trying to teach you something. Okay. And and I thought about it for a while, and one of the ones that we all love is Schoolhouse Rock. And what right. is that doing? That's teaching you something. Right. Okay. And just before we went off the air – um. We were just starting to get the pandemic notice, and I noticed that we were going to have to – the kids were going to be home. And so I started prepping the house ready for doing some homeschooling for Gwen for a couple of weeks. Little did I know it was going to turn into a month and a half. Right. And possibly even longer. So at this point, I started thinking, what am I going to show my daughter for some education? And that's where this whole idea for education and cartoons. There's another legal aspect involved in this, which I'll get into once we get started. Okay. So. Oh, 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 okay. That was the, <laughs> that was the end of your statement. All right. So you can go ahead and, oops, solo on. That's not what I want. Yeah. I'm going to get this out of here. Uh, let's see if we got Rose. Cause we, we need to talk to her. Better. Hello. Yeah. What did you do? I, I logged out and came back in. You look better. And, and and I honestly think it has nothing to do with you, of course. Um, <laughs> it never does. It never does, to be honest with you. It really never does have anything to do with you. I really think in the current situation of our society, everybody is online. Everybody is online. Okay? And um, it's just sucking up bandwidth. I, I feel sorry for the suppliers or the providers because they're trying – they're playing keep up. Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, a number of the streaming services are offering a lot of free services um, right now. Um, like right now, I've, 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 I'm watching a lot of stuff on my um, cable system that are suddenly free these last few weeks. Sure, um, sure. I, I, I've seen the same thing. I don't necessarily think that's a good idea. I think they're playing human relations and trying to unbore people by watching our stuff to convince them to sign up for it later. Absolutely. I it's marketing. I totally get that. But in terms of, uh, oh, my God, suppose we're invaded by aliens yeah. and someone has to send, uh, you know, email to the president and say, hey, we've been trying to reach you, but uh, they took over Kansas. You know, then it's like, well, why didn't you call me before? We were trying to get through, you know, so. Um, Considering how I feel and, you know, my politics, I'm not going to respond to that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. It's it's the same with me, buddy. I I, I don't utilize the name at all. So okay, um, you know I've I've done that since uh, day one. So anyway, uh, yeah, Dave. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dave. Oh, oh, there's so many jokes I can make about there that. There is, there is, and it's all Wayne's worlds too. You guys are insane. What well, we lost? There she goes. <laughs> I, I, she out. had a filter on her system and that it was, wasn't was booting her as often. Well, we knew in the beginning, Jerome, that her internet service, which I think she said was Comcast, Comcrap, as we call it, is in fact crap. You are coming through fine. You're in another state. She's right here in the freaking state of Florida. Okay, so, I, I, you know, it's just crappy internet service she has. You know, it's, okay. it's just, uh, just that. Okay, um, whenever you are ready... You can right. go ahead and begin, and I have your first video queued up. All right. I'll let you know when to start that. Um, when television first came out, okay, one of the things that they had that they started doing was regulating um, everything involved in it. And one of the things that they said is that there has to be time to educate our youngsters because we didn't – they knew right away in America, not in England, but in America that – the whole point of the television was to sell junk, okay? Gene Roddenberry, one of my heroes, said the purpose of selling of, of television was the selling of soap flakes or soap. And he was right. And what do we have? We have television doing nothing but selling. 
So the government, in its wisdom during the 1950s, said if you want a license to broadcast, you have to set aside some time for education for the younger audience members. And that's part of where Saturday morning cartoons came from, was this attempt to educate kids. You'll notice that a lot of them have uh, a lot of the cartoons have issues of morals and and you know it's good to work together as a team and stuff like that. Well, as time went on, some of them really got really good at education. Um, schoolhouse rock and all that. So what I thought today is is we should take a look at some of these. And one of the ones we're going to start with is called Yankee Dot It. And that one started in the 1950s as part of the Looney Tunes. There were three of them that were um, commissioned by Westinghouse as an education on what business is. Okay? From you know pr mass production, how to sell to customers, and so on. This is my personal favorite, and um, if you could go ahead and run parts of this, that would be great, Mark. Okay, okay. Here we go. Actually, it's a minute 58. Want me to run it all? Go for it. Oh, twat. Now, will somebody explain why the elves have we turned yet? But I want to stay in business. How can I do it? Business? Well, let me explain it this way. A manufacturer who sticks to old equipment cannot compete and must fail. To survive, he must persuade people to risk savings in his business. And then buy new equipment, in production, and show profit. And he keeps the profit. Oh no, that's what a lot of people think. But he doesn't. Out of profit, he must pay dividends to investors. The profit must be put back into the business to buy newer and better machinery. Spend his profit on machinery? Oh, when does it all end? It never ends. Constant replacement with the weightless machinery makes the industry more efficient, thus enabling it to pay higher wages and still make a profit. This efficient operation also results in more goods, a better quality, and produces them at a lower cost to everyone. By thunder, if that's the way it's done, I'll do it. And now all of those employees are quarantined. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, is this is done in the 1950s, okay? Um, we're recovering from the war... Uh, people are a little um, ideological concerning um, how business is supposed to work. And as a matter of fact, in the 1950s, it was exactly working like that, the way people thought it was supposed to work. Okay, And this impacted a lot of people from the 1960s. I mean, I grew up thinking this is how business is supposed to work. Little did I know when I grew up and actually got a job that, you know, that was baloney. Okay. I actually remember that cartoon, and, and, and I agree. It was very educational. It did, you know, teach young people uh, exactly how the world works for them since they're only in school and they're not, not actually going to 9 to 5. So that was pretty, uh, that was pretty good. Right. And one of the others that I was looking at was the discussion about how mass production lowers the cost of pro um, products and hence makes it cheaper for when you're selling a product. Got it. Um, Rose, are you existing here? Looks like she's on her cell phone. I'm on my phone. Okay, oh, so Rose. We know it is, in fact, your internet at your house that sucks. Yes, it is. But we knew that. We knew, we knew that for a long time now. So, um, But, you know, this, it's good to see you. And um, hopefully you're enjoying, uh, you know, at least Saturday morning cartoons because this is uh, 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 Kara uh, right now is telling us exactly <laughs> what <laughs> what this topic is all about. Okay, uh, Jerome, keep going, brother. Okay, so 
along with the 1950s of that cartoon that we saw with the Looney Tunes, during this show time from 1951 to 1965, we had the infamous Mr. Wizard. Okay. Now, we all know Mr. Wizard when we see him. He's this older guy teaching the neighborhood kids some science. Well, he was a lot younger when he started. And trust me, on some of the video, the video we're going to show you, you're going to be surprised at how young he is. But basically, this, this guy taught um, kids on the TV basic science. And I'm talking like from elementary to early high school physics and chemistry. And it was done in such a way that a lot of kids – actually credit Mr. Wizard is how they got into science and got into the fields of physics, chemistry, medicine, etc. And people like Mr. Wizard were hugely influential into what they um into into the lives of everybody. And unfortunately though, because he was such an icon of, of our culture for a while, he also became the subject of some ridicule and um um, spoofing on some shows later in the 80s and 90s. So, Mark, why don't you run clip number two, please? Um, I don't care where you pick it up. It doesn't matter. It's kind of a long show. So it is. That's part of it. So you just tell me when to stop, okay? Yeah, you go right ahead. Just, you know, sort of jump in the middle if you can so you can see kind of what we're doing. I'm just looking for a demonstration. I don't need the opening. Sure. Let's go back. The one we're looking at right there. Bring it over here. <coughs> and you can down and see if you can find your electromagnet. Here, 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 and we'll go on this wire right here, up to the next. Okay. <laughs> now, when the other two are going through that wire around, around, what's going to happen? I'm going to burn up. And then we'll draw the pins. Mm -hmm. And um, it's there. Yeah, I'm right. Right. Can you take your finger, finger off and switch? Now, what happens? Then there won't be any magnetism anymore, and it'll drop down. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of up and down, up and down. Now, you mm -hmm. put your hand up there on the switch. And this is a secret message about good nutrition. Now here, Betsy, you take the chart, and you go on up to the writing desk there, and Willie, get up to the drawing pad, and you write down what Betsy tells you. Okay. Now I'll send you the secret message. <laughs> Ready? Ready. I'm going to send the code here with the telegraph key. Betsy, you look it up on the chart, and give Willie the letter, and Willie, you write the letter down there on the drawing pad. Okay. Here's the first one. Dip, dip, da, dip. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you can stop it here. Now here's the next one. Can't hear you. Mark, I can't hear you. Mark. Darn it. I had some great lines I was saying there, too, before I unmuted myself. I, I just didn't want to... <laughs> Wait a minute, do I have Rose muted too? Yeah, I didn't want to cough on, on, on air. Um, yeah, that, I was about to say, you know, we got cell phones now. We don't need dot, 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 dash, and then look it up on a freaking chart. Okay, we got A. <laughs> however, however, though, that right there is interesting because electromagnets that he showed and making that noise is what a speaker is also. Ah, yeah, I guess we got to start somewhere, right? As any good scientist will tell you, you have to start at your basics to build to complexity. I now, understand. I will say this, and as, as an architect and as a, as a guy who does buildings and stuff, it was because of Mr. Wizard that I was watching that he explained how bridges work. Yeah, oh, cool. He took, yeah. he took these three pieces of cardboard and he said, make a bridge with them. And these guys made different types of bridges with the cardboard, and it was interesting. And I learned yeah, and I understood now as I drive across bridges, you know, do right. I need to be nervous on this one or is that, am I okay? <laughs> now, I've never watched Mr. Wizard. Rose, did you watch Mr. Wizard? Uh, I watched the Mr. Wizard's World, I think, when it, he was older. Yeah, wow. that was 1983 to 1990 was when they That's did the revival. Oh, yeah. my God. Uh, Cartoon Crew, if you uh, if you have seen Mr. Wizard, if you've watched with Mr. Wizard, chime in and, and, and let us know. Uh, so I'm not the only uh, idiot who hasn't. So, <laughs> and then, and again, he, the way he did it because he brought in the kids, a lot of people 
um, watched it and learned a lot of science. And yes, Dennis, they did spoof him a lot with the with the Professor Proton, Bob Newhart playing Professor Proton. Um, oh, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that was really cool. Like, he yeah, did have a good role I know, there. I know a number of people in the um in the uh, sciences who who are our age or older who said Mr. Wizard was the reason they got into it. Wow. Now I'm very familiar with with Mr. Wizard and who he was. I just never watched any of his productions at all. So yeah. All right. What else you got? Well, mm -hmm. you, um, the next one is all right. How many of you remember Tennessee Tuxedo, um, voiced by the great Don Adams? Yeah, I did. Yes. All right. Now Tennessee Tuxedo always had some scam going on. The problem was Tennessee didn't have an education. And at first, things would, wouldn't work out, so they would escape from the zoo, and they would go to this guy named Phineas J. Whoopi. Yes, and he, Whoopi. And he used his 3D blackboard to educate yeah. people on how things worked. This is how I learned how they made um, snow for ski resorts. Okay, this is what I remember to a T. I always look really forward to going to Mr. Whoopi because... This guy literally drew diagrams out for you. I love Tennessee Tuxedo when they were doing that. Like I said, this is how I learned about artificial snow You know, on the ski resorts, was watching one of those episodes. So the clip we're going to show, I don't even remember which one it is because I did this three weeks ago. It starts at four minutes, around four minutes 10, four minutes 13. If you could start that um, clip, Mark, that would be great. Okay, you, want me to go, you want me to go to four minutes? Yes, please, because right. the, the other four minutes beforehand are basically the setup for why they're going to see Mr. Whoopi. Yes, and I, and actually, oh, actually, he's in in three minutes. Oh, he's in three minutes, so mm -hmm. I'm still advancing. Okay, so we'll start it here. Okay, I can't see it, though. I know you can. You can. I'm queuing it up. So No problem. Uh, Thank gonna, you. going to start right here, I think. Where's the volume? Oh, mm -hmm. I gotta press play. <laughs> Hold on, guys, that was my screw up. That is a big guy. You mix up some uh, uh, I mean, I mean you, uh, uh, Yes, Mr. Whoopi. And we better see him fast. So soon, our heroes were in the office of their friend and advisor, Phineas J. Whoopi, the man with all the answers. That's it, Mr. Whoopi. We've got to make a great team, Paul. Well, that sounds like a cup of cheer. Really? Well, that's a job that can't be watered down. Sounds, Sounds like we'll, we'll have to use the three-dimensional white ball. Oh, it'll be more precise, my boy. We'll get any more. Now, where did I put it? Perhaps in the car. Let's see. Oh, 
certainly wants to know how to draw. And draw Oh, no, no. That's just a special kind of ice. Like ice cream men use to keep their ice cream cold in their trucks. When you sprinkle it on the clouds, it's called seeding. Because each little seed of ice helps make the drops grow bigger. Of course, it doesn't work every time, but that's good enough. Let's go. Stop. Take off. Okay, you stop it, man. Soon our heroes, together with Vinny and Jay, will... Okay. That's freaking amazing. I, I, I'm i like, wow. I, I I really wasn't sure the process of that, and I just learned something just sitting here. Amazing. Right. And I actually, as a kid, I actually saw this one, and I looked, and I had my father help me look this one up further as to how the dry ice works, which is basically it cools down the water to make it heavier and hence bump into more water and form raindrops. Wow. Good one, Cheryl. Good one. I had no idea. That's cool. Oh, I didn't know that either. That's good. Yeah. That, that, that's amazing. Boy, he was funny how he was making his little his little jokes <laughs> that if you didn't listen long and hard enough, you're like, what? <laughs> you know, what do you say? So, oh. so Rose, do you remember Tennessee tuxedo? Oh yes. Of I course. Used to a lot. Yep. Yeah. And that, and like I said, Tennessee tuxedo was one where it was definitive. I mean, you, you, you start off with something comic and, and they sneak in the education on you and you want to go see it. You want to watch the education because the way they presented it. I love Tennessee Tuxedo. I, I really did. I did. Uh, I, I watched um, the show all the time. So, yeah, and, and, and everybody I know that watched it always felt like they came away with something positive, you know, because of Mr. Whoopi. All righty. We are on now number four of ten. So whenever okay. you're ready. The next one is called The Untamed World. Now, how many of you out there remember on Sunday nights watching Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom? Oh, I don't know, it. right before it. it was right before the wonderful world of Disney, they would always yeah. run the Wild Kingdom. Yeah. Always. Okay. Every Sunday. Well, they did this um this children's version of it, and it was often confused as it called the Untamed World. Ran only one season in the United States, but it was a huge hit in Canada. And if you could go ahead and run it, it's basically the opening uh, montage, and and we can talk about it on the other side. And four coming up right now. So 58 seconds, so this will be fairly short. Mm So what we have here is, and this is where my own problem with this was, is as a kid, I didn't notice it because I wasn't aware enough. But I, as an adult, when I looked at this, I realized it's all Africa. It's either all Africa or all South America. They didn't really yeah. explore a lot of the other areas. Um, so, but either way, what do we have? We have a wildlife show, which is basically the easiest one for most um, networks to get behind because they can understand a wildlife show. Um, the problem was it wasn't very popular here in the States because we were all staying up at night on Sunday night at dinner time watching Wild Kingdom. Wild Kingdom, yeah. Because I really don't recall this show at all, to be honest with you. you know, yeah, I, it, was, it was one season. Okay. All right. I was Like you said, I was stuck with Mutual of Omaha, so there was no reason for me to change the channel. Plus, I had to get up and across the damn room to do it so well, you know that well mutual omaha was it's about seven eight o'clock at night while this was a saturday morning cartoon uh show yeah it's really interesting it's not even a cartoon but yeah i, I get it and we got a few people here in our cartoon crew who do uh 
remember it. And I'm like, what? I don't remember it at all. Uh, Deanna's saying hi, Terry, but I don't see hi, Ter I don't see Terry at all. So welcome again. You were up late last night, Terry, over from Ireland. Welcome back. All right, buddy. What else you got? Well, the next one is a, is, is a homegrown one due to a, um, a terrible incident, and they turned it into something positive. In 1969, it was the Smokey the Bear show. I don't know if anybody remembers Smokey the Bear. Or it, was originally, it was actually – his actual title is Smokey Bear, not Smokey the Bear. But gotcha. This was a um, show that started um, in, in late. Um, I don't remember it too well, but – and this is the weird part. As a kid, how many of you remember Viewmasters? Did you have a oh, Viewmaster? Yeah. Was sure. Yeah, the little round uh, 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 file of film that you stuck down in the top of the, the viewer, and you clicked it to advance to the next one. Exactly. And it was – if you looked at it carefully – Across it, you only got about six or seven of them, and right across, it was the exact same picture, so that you would get bino bion bionic view, um, binocular view. Well, for me, my exposure to Smokey the Bear was through some Viewmaster um, stuff. That's very interesting because you're you're re you're you're I, you just initiated Total Recall in my brain. There, go ahead. So, but. Ironically, where I was at, yes, yeah, right, Craig, 1969. Um, no, I, think he was talking about, I think he was talking about himself. He's still a exactly. young man. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, the, but ironically, the funny thing was, is those Viewmasters were so popular with Smokey Bear, okay, that um, they were a hit everywhere. My Cub Scout group did a play at um, this big thing doing this Smokey Bear story. Okay. Okay. Now, what was the Smokey Bear thing? The story was basically about our ecology in the forest, mainly about preventing the fires. They did some talking about littering, not just spoiling nature. And it was done in three shorts. You had Smokey on the front and the back one, and in the middle was a live-action one with kids about fire prevention. Now, we're talking a full-grown Smokey the Bear who came in in that middle, and he was animated, correct? Right. Okay. The middle one was live action, and it was kids talking to a, a forest ranger. You mm -hmm. had animated at the, at the first short, the live action with the kids and the forest ranger, and the last short was Smokey animated again. Okay, let me, let me interrupt. Can you, uh, do you know the origin, though? Of what, Smokey? Yes. Uh, he was a bear that survived a forest fire in the southwest by climbing up the top of a tree and hanging on for dear life. There you go. And then how does the – because I think in the animated portion of it, we did uh, at some point, somewhere, did we ever see the uh, the forest ranger? No. Um, as far as I know, we never do. If we do, it's only in the opening credits because what you see in the show is a full – and is an adult Smokey wearing pants and the hat and holding right. the – no yeah, shirt, he but, he's, but he's wearing he, – he's holding the shovel. Yeah, he was topless. I, I yeah. never understood. That. It's like, you know, well, I got clothes on, but I don't need a shirt. <laughs> At least he's wearing pants. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> At, least he wearing pants. At um, least he was wearing pants. Yeah. Okay. So why don't you run that clip? That's just basically going to be the opening as far as I can remember. All right. Take a look. Let's see what we got here. It was like Rankin Bass's work. Yep, it was. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> I, I got a tear in my eye. And it was one of the first real strong ecology um, shows. Yeah, yeah. No, and, and, of course, his famous, his famous phrase was, only you can prevent forest fires. 
Right, and that was because of the success of, of, of the whole Smokey Bear aspect. People really took to that critter like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's move on. Okay. In 1970, there was a show on CBS primetime called um, um, De- Takari or something like that. I can't oh, pronounce Dakari. it. Takari. D-A-K-A-T-A-R-I. Doctari, actually. D-A-K-T-A-R-I. Doctari. I'm glad you can pronounce it because I sure as heck can't. No, I watched it. I watched it. It's famous for Clarence, the cross-eyed lion. Really? I didn't know that. I, I was watching it. Mutual of Omaha. Okay. It was a live action. It was a live action show, and there was a lion. It was actually uh, a spinoff. Excuse me for interrupting. It was a spinoff from the motion picture Hatari. Right. I know Hatari. Uh, John Wayne, Red Buttons, you know, and, and, and a few of lesser people in there. So they made it into a TV series called Doctari. Well, they did a, a children's spinoff called Jambo that ran for two seasons from in 1970. And it was the companion piece to that. Interesting. Right. So why don't you run that clip and we'll see the intro. Okay. Da, 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 it's a minute and a half, minute 20. <laughs> Wow, that's so cute. <laughs> feel jamaican instead of african yeah that's true you're right in fact the guy that was singing it his name was shelly yeah i, I got one <laughs> question to ask. <laughs> that do you boy remember watching this one at all uh, rose i i don't remember that at all okay. i don't either i don't either I, I i don't remember it man i thought i knew all the shows back when i was a kid but man that one doesn't strike yeah so i mean again you know it, it only ran two seasons um a lot of kids were not watching these types of shows in the morning. They would watch them at night with their parents, you know? Right, like Mutual of Omaha. Yeah, Wild yeah, Kingdom. Or the other one. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. So now I have to ask a question to the cartoon crew. Uh-oh. And, and to Mark, who's old. Uh-oh. Do you remember in the 1950s? Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa. You you better pull that crap forward because I don't <laughs> you do I remember you know so I was in the back of a '69 Chevy I think or something like, I don't know. Go ahead. All right, well for some of our older members of the of the cartoon crew, okay, careful. <laughs> um, there was Edward. I mean, how many of you know, know who Edward R. Murrow is? Yeah, of course. I know who he is. Yeah. Okay, I wasn't there. I'm but, yeah, how many I, people don't know who he is? Okay, yeah. Edward R. Murrow. Hosted a show called You Are There. Yay. Okay. I remember. And it was a dramatization of key points in history and sort of dramatizing people would talk about um, what, you know, some of the things that would go on in a person's mind and, and, and talk about, you know, interviewing people. And it was a history lesson. And they revived it in 1971. And Cronkite, oh, I'm sorry, not Edward Armour. Cronkite hosted both versions. My notes are wrong. I had to oh, rewrite yes, those. Yes, you're right. I'm wrong on that. You're right. You are there was Con- Cronkite, stupid That's me. right. That's right. I admit it. I was wrong. I, 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 I hadn't written one thing, and then I crossed it off and wrote Cronkite when I, um, on my notes. The notes. Yeah, well, we're now inching up to the 60s now, so that's pretty cool. So keep yeah, going. Yeah, but this was 1971. They revived it. Okay. Okay. This was their attempt at doing a history lesson for kids 
during the ni- early 1970s. Go ahead and run the clip, number seven, please. Uh, 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 we don't have to run it long, just so we get a feel for the show. God, it's three minutes, but yeah, I get you. March 1st, 1836. The Mexican government has sent troops into Texas under the command of the Mexican chief of state, General Santa Ana. The troops are opposed by a small group of Texans. They're holed up in the Alamo mission. The Texans are greatly outnumbered. It seems doubtful that they can hold out unless they get help. And no one knows if this help will come before Santa Ana launches a full-fledged attack. The Mexican, Mexican province, province of Texas, Texas is not a part, a part of the United, of the United States, States, although it, although it has been populated by a steady stream of Americans. These Texians, as they are called, are Mexican citizens. Their province is part of the Mexican nation, but their difficulties with the central government have steadily increased. Now there is open rebellion. March 5th, 1836. That sounds like William Conrad. The siege of the Alamo. That's William Conrad. He was canon. You are there. Why are you talking to us like that? <laughs> okay, that's good enough for now. Oh my gosh. That was that was canon. That was William Conrad. Right. Yeah. But the whole point of it though is is now what they're gonna do is is like a news show. They're going to go around, and they're going to interview the famous people at the Alamo. Davy Crockett, right. Sam Houston, you know, the whole the whole queue of them. And they're going right. to interview them, and then they'll see them interview the guys on the other side, just like That's a new show. Awesome. That's awesome. So they had actors that dressed them up in uh, historical garb, and it's like, hey. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Okay. So this was their attempt at history lessons. Well, it didn't work. Okay, it didn't do well at all. Okay, why? Because the kids associated Walter Cronkite with what mom and dad watched on the news at six thirty or seven o'clock. Right. Okay, this is not a guy that they're associating with them. Okay. We missed that shot that Cheryl was mentioning. I don't know. Didn't see it. It may. She may be right. I didn't get a chance to. I I didn't research that one as deep as I wanted to. Okay. Okay, but that was the whole problem. When you start bringing in these adults who the kids associated with your parents, they're not going to watch it until they get older. Yeah, they gave a chance for the kids to say, get off my lawn. Yeah. (laughs) You know, so. You've been been hanging around with David Gerald again, haven't you? Oh, no. But I'm sure some kid are probably watching that and, and looking at Walter and going, aren't you dead yet? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Remind me, I'll have to send you a picture of me and Walter. Oh, what? Yeah. Really? You met the man? I did indeed. Oh, that's, cool. Cool. that's awesome. That yep. really I'll cool. just send you that picture, or, or I think it might even be on my Facebook pictures if you go look through there. I'll have to see if it's there. Okay. Anyway, so basically that was the end of the 60s. And then we got into the 70s, and then... There was only one thing from the 1970s to the mid-90s that did any sort of education. But there was one minor one that did it that I didn't bring up because I couldn't find a good one, and that was Timer. <clears throat> I know, but we have to give him his credit because I made, I made wagon wheels and I made the little lollipops that he taught how to do. Oh, yes! Okay. I, I, I love those. I love Timer. Yeah, Timer was fun. And he was based off of one of those Saturday afternoon, Saturday um, at school, after school, after Saturday afternoon school specials. But then we came to the classic, the iconic, Schoolhouse Rock. Now, we have done two shows on Schoolhouse Rock. Not enough. Exactly. We will be doing a third at some point. But I do want to bring up this point about Schoolhouse Rock. Schoolhouse Rock was made by an advertising agency. Mm-hmm. So they understood that the song, the jingles, had to be catchy and had to have the hook. This yep. is why they resonate so well. 
Right. Okay. Advertisers came in and did it. And what from what I've read is these advertisers were feeling a little guilty is what somebody said. Hmm. And so they wanted to do something for the kids. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know how true that is, but that's what I read. So at this point, we're looking at the greatest. Go ahead and run the clip. It's 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 a good one. Down, 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 grab the Was that Rose? Was Rose? that Science Rock? Science Rock? That was indeed part of Science Rock. It was part of the Schoolhouse Rock system. Um, and and what's interesting on this is that, like I said, with Schoolhouse Rock, is how popular it is. It's it's being used in schools today um, to teach basics of English, math, science, history, and so on. Um, and that's and that's the. the it, I mean, if you look at it, we're looking at what. 40, almost 50 years, and this thing is still around and still being used. School hop, uh, schoolhouse rock, and it's, it's, it's not just my, my, my because I, I love it. Whoops, sorry. It's, it's not just because I love it so much, but it's the fact that it's just so relevant. I mean, for infinity, I think, you know, you gotta, you get, you're always gonna have children. Children are gonna have to learn the basics, and schoolhouse rock can always assist with that, and, and that's why it'll never go out of style. Oh, absolutely. Hey, Mark, didn't you see a live version of Schoolhouse Rock? Oh yes, I went to a Broadway show uh, here in town, and just a good thing she got that question off because she just kicked herself out again. <laughs> you know? Oh no! I went up to a live production. It was called Schoolhouse Live, and I went down to the our opera center, our Philharmonic Center down here, and watched it. And I was just such a kid in that thing; it was just unbelievable. 
You know, I was singing everything they were singing on stage. You know, they did three is the mighty, mighty is the three is the magic number, and so on and so on. Um, but it was Schoolhouse Rock, man. I just love Schoolhouse Rock. Uh, so does Garrett. Well, how can no. you not? And but I will say this though is that um, parents who grew up with Schoolhouse Rock, okay, still look at it as a kids' thing versus an educational tool. Because okay? it's a cartoon. They see Bingo. the image. Yeah. My my ex wife, um, who was a teacher, was using Schoolhouse Rock to teach basic English because she was an English teacher, and she had a number of parents freak out at her. Because she was using Schoolhouse Rock. Oh, how ignorant! It, it, well, exactly. It, it, <laughs> and and that's probably the same teacher who's got a copy of Fritz the Cat at home. <laughs> <laughs> but you know. my point is, the Schoolhouse Rock, um, because of the catchy jingles, we have all learned basics. Okay. Yep. We all know how a bill is supposed to go through Congress. Right. Okay? We know the conjunctions. Yes. Okay. We know our basic math of multiplication tables, you know, and, and, and it's still popular and that's the strength sure. of it. And because it was so strong, and by the way, this was on NBC, on ABC, the, the network ABC, the other networks tried, they couldn't come up with anything as good. And yeah. it just was, you know, it was ABC's real strong and nothing else was done educationally until 1993. 92, I mean. Right, okay. right. And, and, and I, I, now they're going in the opposite realm where they're basically flooding uh, the, the, the Saturday mornings with educational stuff and less with cartoons because they probably think dropping an anvil on somebody's head um, that somebody's actually going to go out there and try it. They're probably right, but um, <laughs> we, we came out fine. I never dropped a safe or an anvil or a piano on somebody's head in my entire lifetime, right? Yeah, I never tried to run anybody into a a, a wall with a hole in it, you know. So. Yeah, yeah, well, we did the eye pokes. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't do well. The eye pokes in uh, the Three Stooges, basically, they were hitting. Yeah, they were hitting the top of the the the, 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 the brim of the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, we're all gonna catch the coronavirus. Yeah, I'm trying to get it out of my system now. Hold on for a sec. We'll be gone in a minute. <laughs> I'm scared. Okay. So, all right. So, in 1992, science and other things came back. Okay. First, it started off with this clip. Go ahead and run clip number nine, please. Okay. Actually, I'm I'm, I'm looking at uh... Dennis. It's it's educational in the fact that it teaches gravity. No, you know what? <laughs> just, just ask him to prove it. Okay. Just, just prove it. No, no. You know? But Dennis, Dennis. If he really wanted to do science with the anvil, he needed to drop like an egg or a tennis ball at the same time to prove that gravity pulls at the same rate across it, what Galileo did. Yeah, just make sure you're standing under it when you do it. So, yeah. <laughs> that's what I want, and I'm sticking with it. So there. So let me get up your clip here. And I have never – well, I may have seen this show once, guys, um, I think. Oh, I see. Let me click back. Oh, I see. I got to wait until it actually starts before I click back to another screen. Oh. Mm -hmm. Pressing go. Okay, so Bill Gottenai is basically the modern Mr. Wizard. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, here's the funny thing about Bill. Bill's not a scientist. Right. Bill is an eng is a mechanical engineer. Well, that's correct. Okay. I, I got a, a short story after you're done, but go ahead. Okay. So here's the funny thing about Bill. Bill had huge influence on, on, on the kids today. Okay. Not on the kids, but on their parents who got into science. Okay. And so what is Bill now? Bill is now a huge 
um, advocate about climate change, and he's head of the National Space Society. I don't know right. if you knew that one. Okay. Bill is everywhere as an ed- as a science education educator, and even they even did a Netflix um, documentary on him. Okay. This guy did it all for the kids of the 1990s. Okay, yeah. go ahead with what you have to say, Mark. Uh, I've met Bill. Uh, Bill. Oh. oh, yeah. Bill and Bob Picardo are best of friends. Bill and Bob Picardo was at my last flight, my last launch from the Cape, because Bill Nye sent out a big space sail in yep. one of the, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, in, in one of the satellites that was with our satellite for my Celestis Memorial Space Launch. So his yep. was. I think he went up in a higher orbit. I think we we were released out of that SpaceX rocket before him, but he went up to a higher orbit and released that. So, yes, I have met Bill. I, I am a member of the National Space Society, and I know about the light sail. And, yeah. yeah and, and basically what they did was this, and they used it to go up to an even higher orbit. Okay. So to prove, prove that it worked, and it did, and it worked su- um, incredibly successful. They're now looking to do their next project with it. Rose, do you remember Bill Nye? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he is everywhere. He also guest starred on an episode of Stargate uh, Atlantis at one point. Oh, did he really? Yes, he did. And he was also, and and, and somebody who mentioned, um, one of the cartoon crew members mentioned the Big Bang. He was on the Big Bang Theory. Oh, cool. Well, he, was, yeah. he was he was listed as a as a competitor against Professor Proton. Professor <laughs> Proton kept accusing him of stealing his ideas. That's incredible. That's really cool. That right. That is incredible. Okay, so so we had Bill Nye, and Bill Nye is cool, and he showed really cool Mr. Wizard-like stuff. But let's be honest. When you're six, seven, eight years old, you like the gross stuff. You know, you like the boogers and, and slime. So go ahead and run into episode um, clip number not 10. Not yet. This uh, one that we're about to show, for some bizarre reason, I do say bizarre, I was in love with. I thought it was one of the coolest things that was on TV at the time. And it was really early morning for me when I saw it. Um, and I had the hots for the first girl. Well, yes, the first girl. Uh-huh. I'm about to call you Kara. Um, Jerome, the, the first girl I had the hots for. And <laughs> I absolutely adored this show because it was just so freaking cool. It on- was a great show. I loved it. I learned a lot on it. And I was in my 20s. Yeah, and on top of that, and it'll get to it in this clip. It seems like it took a while. I love the theme music. Love it. Here we go. Flip the tube on there, will you, Herb? Oh, there's never anything new on TV, darling. Hey, at least we can warm our feet by it. Seen it. Seen it. Seen it. What is it? You okay, Don? Yeah, I guess so. What do you think of this channel? Well, my feet are warm. And now, the one you've heard about, the one you've been waiting for, the quarterback of questions, the King Kong of knowledge, the Duke of discovery, the giantest of scientists, the Elvis of experimentation, the Bee Man himself. Ladies and gentlemen, we give you the one and only... Me, Beekman. And you've just broken into Beekman's world. Such a cool show. I had so much fun learning about snot and boogers <laughs> and farts and whatever. I love it. I learned how a toilet works on Beekman's World. 
<laughs> Good for you. <laughs> okay. Now, here's the other thing about Beekman's World. Okay, first off, you're right. The, the the girl, there were two of them. The one, you know, then you know, one walked away from the show for whatever yeah. reason, whatever. Yeah. My favorite though was the rat. Oh yeah, Mark Ritz. Yes, the rat. <laughs> Which I have a rat phobia, so it was still kind of difficult for me to watch that show. <laughs> right. That real. Rose, anything to uh, you say know about what? I never watched an episode of that show. I never did. But I knew no, of it. Really? I always it, turned it, panel. It came on some weird hours. Sometimes I would get it at 7 a.m. You know, on a Saturday morning. Sometimes I saw it at maybe, I don't know, noonish. Uh, I don't know. When yeah, you I remember it being on in the afternoon. It, like, it, it was like the time when I went outside or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I really look forward to Beekman, man. We learned some stuff I didn't, I've never known before. And what happened was the comedic uh, kind of uh, 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 interaction that they had with each other, you know, especially when the rat would to say something. <laughs> but um, yeah, and, and it was always it was always interesting because it was stuff that people didn't want to talk about. Yeah, okay, like you said, the snot and all that. They explained how puke happens and what puke is. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't recall, but don't recall, please. Well, basically, <laughs> it, was, it was it was surprisingly clean. It was. Uh, whatever. It goes, whatever. He goes, whatever. He goes. You know how you you eat Talk and it goes down. He goes. Puke is just the reverse. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's, 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 let me tell you. I, yeah, but, I, I don't want to hear it either. <laughs> but the point well, I'm getting at the point I'm getting at is is he he touched on subjects that people, while it wasn't anything like sex or whatever, it was right. just that people didn't want to talk about, but kids wanted to know. Look, I have right. the greatest the I have the greatest respect, and they should be paid rightfully for what they're making. For people who handle human waste, simple. Yeah. Okay, no, no. You, what, I'll pay you anything you want. Just go pick that up. <laughs> but, but what was funny was like Beekman explained what earwax was. Well, you know? I think that's part of. That's nasty. Ew. Right. But again, earwax. when you're six and seven and eight years old, you want to know what this stuff is, and that's where Beekman's world really touched the nerve. You know, yeah, I and think that's why I give it credit because it did the stuff nobody wanted to do. Right, and I I think only six and seven year olds are the ones that are brave enough to actually want to hear that crap. No pun intended. But again, you know, it was really good. Now, that's all I have for clips. There's one other honorable mention that I want to mention that wasn't on a Saturday morning. It was um all throughout um the days and everything else, and that was on PBS, and that was the Magic School Bus. You know, I've seen. Is that animated? Yes, it is. And it was Lily Tomlin was Miss Frizzle. See, I, so you remember that stuff. And and as much as I love PBS, I love PBS more as an adult than I did as a child. So I didn't really watch PBS. Uh, you know, when I was a when I was a child. So I don't remember a lot of the child. Uh, Rose, um, the Magic Bus on PBS. Do you remember that? Yeah, that was a little bit after I was uh, older. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I did. I I, I knew I knew of it, its existence. I, on PBS, I watched uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Three, two, one. Contact was the science show. Yeah. Uh, uh, Electric Company. Uh, yes, I, I Electric Company. Yeah. I watched that. I love. That's one of my favorite shows. You'll see that I usually, uh, if I get really depressed, I put on that. I, I put on their theme song on on my I website. Think, uh, hey, you got. I think when I got um, into my teens, I really got into the Electric Company because they had a segment of Spider Man on they it. They did. Yes, they did. No, what no was actor was on the Electric Company. Yeah, a live action Spider Man. It's like, oh my God, that's oh, I watched this show. Look what David said. I watched Zoom. this. Show. Yeah, it was yeah. done in Boston. Zoom, Zoom was wonderful. I love yeah. Zoom. Yes, Boston. I remember Zoom. Fox um, three five zero, Boston, Mass. Oh, two one three four. <laughs> yeah. Send it to Zoom. See, I think when you have children, you 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 you're attached a lot longer than oh, we single people. Enough with those kind of shows because you're passing it down to your children and you're recalling your childhood. See, I'm now look, Cheryl says her son liked Magic School Bus. 
Yeah, I saw that. Um, that we had how and how to all how science and workings of things. Yeah, you guys over there in Ireland, you just figured out the chemical composition of Guinness. That's all you have <laughs> for. So I don't want to hear that crap from you, Terry. Uh, what? What what is Grandpa this? Called Grandpa. I told her to, but she needs to know why. And Grandpa's calling me. Zabumafu, yeah. I remember this. Is 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 that the one with uh oh I forget what his name is. I've never heard of that before in my life. I thought I've seen that. I've seen that show. I never heard of it either. But but yeah. PBS had some really good stuff. I mean reading Rainbow and stuff like that. Sure. But um, oh, yeah. the whole point I'm getting at is is that Magic School Bus was one of those that lasted a long time. They've even done now a sequel on Netflix. Okay. okay. Maybe I'll look it up. Yeah. And 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 the whole thing with, the whole thing with Magic School Bus was that it was it was it was not designed for kids, you know, it was basically a a preschool to elementary early elementary school science and s stories. And they, right. they talked about a lot of things. And it was really good. It was very popular, really well done. And, and I wanted to mention that, you know, um, so we just, okay. And we, you know, it was really good and it, it, it was very influential. They, that again, another one of those that influenced people to get into the sciences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Terry just put up something here and I'm posting. Uh, we just found out we can't fly. Imagine how surprised that. 30,000 feet. Okay, I think I understand part of what he said. I don't understand um, what that means. Okay, so uh, great show that Bonnie said. Oh, I guess she's, uh, uh, Zoom, what great, what's the great show, Bonnie? Um, I have no idea what you're talking about. I think she's saying our show is great today. I don't think so. I think she's talking about the Magic School Bus. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what she responds to. Uh, Okay, so it was the Martin and Chris Crash show. So a Zuma, Zuma, uh, the Boomafo that she was saying great show for. Oh, those had the little puppets, I think. The, oh my God. the, the puppets really? that were like animals. And right. they, they, they thought, yeah, I, I remember that. Was, uh, now, 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 Martin and Chris Kratt, I think they're part of the, um, the, there's a show on PBS that teaches wildlife. My daughter loves that show. Okay. You no. Know? I like looking at the <laughs> My children the They're Australian, by the way. Yeah, good job, Winnie, housewife. Good Winnie, what's job. What's that show you like with the Kratz? It's called Wild Kratz. Wild. Okay, never heard of it. No, well, that I haven't heard you're of. Watching, you're not watching kids PBS nowadays. Yeah, no. I have no reason to. My kids yeah. are too you old. Don't for that. Mind. You don't mind if I pass that, okay? If I, you know, <laughs> we're good. We're good. I mean, there are some children's shows that I do like, but you know, some of some of this, like New Zoo Review. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Okay, here's one. Here's one that was in syndication. Only showed up on Sunday mornings, and it was yeah. on syndication. Was the Big Blue Marble? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yes. I used to watch that. Okay, so yep. which one was the school bus that went into space? That was the that was the magic school bus. Magic school, bus. Magic school bus. Okay, all right. So I I remember catching that. Um, I didn't have the patience to sit through it. So um, Jerome, you did a great job, man, as usual. This Thank was you. very entertaining. I didn't know how this would actually come off because you have more live action stuff in here than what our mantra basically is, and that's cartoons. Um, but it was very very uh, appropriate and um, very educational and, and, and a good addition to um, all the shows that we've done in the past. So that was that was fantastic. So I hope the uh, cartoon crew, I hope you appreciated uh, Jerome's hard work, uh, the knowledge that he instilled on all of us, uh, the memories. I'm still thinking of Smokey the Bear now, you know. <laughs> you can prevent forest fires, you know. So um, that was, oh, yeah. <laughs> Hey, good job, girl. You go, girl. You go, Cara. Good job, girl. <laughs> um, that was great. So, uh, whose turn is it next week? You. Yours. Oh, damn it. <laughs> you okay. You you have right. three weeks to work on it. Yeah. Well, oh, listen to this. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, and hopefully I won't be uh, home for the entire week. I'm waiting for my results to come back. Um, and then um, I'm going to work. 
I mean, you know, hopefully it is. Please, please, please be negative. And uh, I'm going back to work uh, as soon as I get that. Uh, thanks a lot, Charlie. I'm glad you, uh, yes, it was a fun and educational show. Which reminds me, it looks to me like uh, Schoolhouse Rock needs to make a return. He's a part three. Um, you know, but we'll see. Parts one and two to put up on the web on the uh, YouTube channel. Say again. We need to find the part one and two shows that we did and put them up on the YouTube channel. Yeah. Now remember, in the early days of this show, we sucked. You know, oh, yeah, it was really bad. <laughs> our, our 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 Schoolhouse Rock shows were both they both crashed. Yeah. <laughs> we, we had a lot of technical problems back then. And it, Mark, it, it, don't it, hold it, back. Tell us how it now. really was. Hey, no, 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 no. So that just. You know, just reminds us. Thank you, Rose. That reminds us that we need redos. We may, we may, we may need a new part one, a new part two, and then whatever, because it's nothing that I really think I want to put out there. <laughs> right. I, 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 yeah. They, it was really, really. The technical problems were so bad. I, yeah. I agree. I agree, and I think I think we should redo Schoolhouse Rock as if it was our very first one. Yeah, yeah we, I agree. We, we, <laughs> We've come so far, guys, that I really have to go through all the old shows that we saved and uh, kind of look at them again and see if we're going to chuck them. Um, it's, a good, it's, a good, uh, it's a good thing that I wrote down some of what shows we did because then I'll talk to you off air about some yeah. we should do. It's interesting. I would love to do Scooby-Doo again. You know, oh, we can do oh, yeah. Scooby Doo. We can we we can do Scooby Doo forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could do twenty years of Scooby Doo. You know, so. Yep. Um, you're absolutely right. I, I, it's just it shows that we got, you know, stockpile that I don't know if I dropped that on China. <laughs> you know? uh, we're all having computer issues, Christina. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, don't worry. It's, it's just a massive <laughs> influx of people that are online at the same time at the end of time. Okay, so until everybody goes back to work, this is what people are doing because you can't even go to the beach now. They officially closed my beach. It's a five. <laughs> $500 fine if they see you out there walking on it. So that just drove a spike right in my heart. They've, they've closed the parking lots by the beach up here. Yeah, they, they did the same. They did that first here because you, you can still get on the beach, but you'd have to park somewhere else. And there were somewhere else's where you could park, which is what I was doing. I parked in neighborhoods and literally walk over the boardwalk. Now they don't want you on the sand at all. Which yeah. I'm like, holy crap! Why don't you kill me for God's sakes? You know, so uh, oh, yeah, it's it's everything's gone, everything. <laughs> yeah, forty years, Charlie. You're right, forty years, buddy. It's actually uh, almost fifty. Yeah, so we got to think. I don't know. I may, I may want that. May be my show next week. I don't know. I have to. You know, you know there's always we could always redo Johnny Quest. Yes. Oh my God! Now you're you're really. Ooh, ooh. We can also redo. We can also redo music. Yes, and we've done that too, and, and, and yeah, I like that. There's a lot. If you guys um, have any suggestions, why don't you go ahead and, you know, put it on our uh, Facebook page or put it on our uh, uh, Cartoon Crew uh, message uh, page, page. I think Charlie and Kevin, I think, uh, or Craig, I think I got to add you guys to that uh, message board for the Cartoon Crew, but... Um, you're right, Car. What 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 do, what do you write about, Car? I have no idea. There's lots of, you know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, remember, guys, we get your messages 20 seconds or so after we've already talked about it. So somehow we don't know what you're referring to because we've moved on. Um, oh, you're Mr. talking about Scooby Doo about being 50 years of Scooby Doo versus 40 years. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Because Scooby Doo premiered in 1969. So that yeah. would be 50 years. Hey, hey David. <laughs> oh, oh, David. This is the 50, 50 year anniversary then. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, David, wow. David, hold on, David. I'm, I'm going to punch you in the liver. Okay. Just, just saying. <laughs> and in fact, on my artist show last night, one of the artist's fortes are cats that she kind of morphs into alien beings and things like that. And the artwork is just out of this world. Unbelievable. I razzed her the entire time. Her pictures were up on the screen. You know, <laughs> it's like, okay, she had to go into cats and she had all these cats. And I'm like, really, 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 exactly, exactly. Um, 
Yeah, Bonnie, we've talked about that. We'll have to talk about that one again, too. Well, and that's just a single episode, and we can't make a whole show out of that episode. Personally, no, but we, I, we, we will mention it when we do Scooby. Yeah, we'll, we'll mention it, but no way am I doing a whole show on that yeah. supernatural episode. No way. You can punch me in the liver. You know, yeah, David. <laughs> laugh, laugh now, buddy. But let's see if you can handle your alcohol when your liver's gone. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Anyway, this was uh, a great show. It's fantastic. I need to uh, queue up. Keep talking. I need to queue up the uh, intro well, order. Well, yeah. So, like I said, education, it was something I was thinking about. And it always reminded me that that um, I had read that they had all required some sort of educational component in every Saturday morning cartoon had to have something educational. So. Yeah. Was, I mean, that's yeah, yeah. good work, Jerome. Yeah. If you think about it. Uh, Jerome and Rose, think about okay, Tom and Jerry, Road Runner, Bugs Bunny, kind of you know uh, programs that they gave us, and run it all the way up to ISIS and Shazam, and you see how the education educational shows kind of went up on an upswing, mainly because they didn't want to show people getting dropped, you know, getting anvils dropped on their heads anymore. It was just well, like okay. Yeah. That was because of a number of parents groups who complained about it. Yes, and it that's absolutely why, was. It absolutely and that's why, was. That's, that's why it's shows like Scooby and all the knockoffs came around was because they were complaining about the superheroes in the 1960s and the so-called violence on television. Violence on television. But let me let me ask you this. Uh, how many reported cases of serious violence have we heard of from cartoons back in that era? We haven't. You no. Know, yeah, I don't know if it curbed anything, to be honest with you. You know, so if you, at, at, if you look at the anime that kids are watching, that's far more violent than anything that Bugs and, and, and Daffy would do. Oh, absolutely. When I first started seeing literally blood, you know, in cartoons, it was like, oh, oh, that's new. Come on. <laughs> you know? All right. So 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 cartoon cartoon related. Hasbro has dropped all of the in, um, all of the GI Joes onto YouTube. If you can find them, there all the episodes are there. But if you look at it, GI Joe is an incredibly violent show. Right, um, yeah. Christina. If you had joined us prior to today, you would have known that we've covered all these things that you want to see. So we'll probably have to do them again. But you got to get on a stick, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Three. Uh, yay! Thanks, Cheryl. Thanks, Cheryl. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Cheryl. Yeah, reminder, Cheryl, we may do um, TV theme songs next Friday since that's been so, has gone so well. You guys, uh, wait a minute. Jerome, have you been knocked out of competition? Did you get beat by somebody? Yeah, two. once. I was, two. I had two, I had two of the, it wasn't the theme songs, it was the trivia. Oh, okay. Um, but you know your theme songs, right? I know a fair number of them, yeah. Okay, all right, well. We're going to revisit that um, probably next Friday. Uh, too bad the educator component was missing. Learning how to treat others was in many episodes. Okay, Jackie. Um, okay. Uh, TV networks were required to have yes, education. They were. Shows. Yeah, of course. But mainly by what Jerome said was those uh, <coughs> parent groups, whatever you want to call it, who got involved and said, okay, Enough of the bashing of a board in the face, okay? And, well, I mean, and you, get it. You, you look at look at Scooby for a second. We talked about Scooby, okay? If you look at Scooby, what did he teach you? Okay, he taught you teamwork. Taught you how to face your fears. That monsters, ghosts, and goblins were not re re um, real. And that crazy people are more scary than the fake monsters. Yeah, but wor what worried me from Scooby was how many kids literally sat down in front of their pets and tried to get them to talk. Okay. <laughs> I, I admit, I admit trying that as a kid. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. And how many? Here's the one for you though. How many went and ate some dog food thinking it would look like a Scooby snack? Scooby snack. Yes, I, I have tried a biscuit before. Yes. Uh, I, I honestly did, and. And I get that. But if that's the worst you're going to do to me, <laughs> you know, just based on cartoons, then Wait fine. a minute. I'll, I'll Wait a minute. It. I got one for you. What's How that? many of us tried to create a Freddy trap? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I had the game mousetrap, so I was just playing the damn. There game. you go. You know, I'm I I have a superpower. You know, I'm, so so I'm, I'm thinking I'm thinking the mousetrap, Freddy, Rue Goldberg, and all that. I'm thinking that's what got you into architecture. Uh, yeah, because you know, I had Lincoln Logs first. That's what really started it. There you go. The Lincoln, Lincoln Logs. Logs. Man, oh, that's showing well, your well, age. Yeah, I just got pissed off. I couldn't fit inside of it. So, you know, <laughs> enough's enough. I'm going to school, you know. So, uh, hey, guys, anyway. thank you so much for what you guys uh, did today. Um, it, it was a great show. Uh, Jerome, you rocked it as always. Uh, thank, thank you guys for joining us. And we just want to say we're going to see and talk to you guys next week. And um, when you do, see us next week. Bye. It'll be my turn, and I'll try to figure out what we're going to do. So thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. Great show. Bye-bye.